Okay, so today I'm looking at the recent release of Savion 8. Now I'm only going to have a quick look at this because I have done two or three other Savion videos, so I'm only going to be taking a quick look here at the XFCE version. Now, uh, basically, Savion, of course, if you're not familiar, is a Gentoo-based distribution. Uh, it is based off Gentoo Rolling, so it is going to be a rolling release. And like I've said before, you do get the power on, and the modular nature of Gentoo here in a nice pre-packaged environment that's easy to install using uh, Fedora's Anaconda installer. And, uh, and it comes with all of the applications, codecs, and tweaks that you're going to need out of the box to get a desktop operating system within the first couple of minutes. So it's a great way to try out Gentoo for the first time. And I did actually get some requests on my channel to take a look at Gentoo. And I will be, wa I will be wanting to take a look at Vanilla Gentoo in the near future, so hang on, you guys. But for those of you who want to give Gentoo a go, then Sabion is a very good option. Uh, now, the package manager, of course, is Entropy. And you have the graphical side of that, which is Sulphur. Now, they don't actually call it Sulphur in this one. They just call it the Entropy Store. Now, unfortunately, I have had problems with the, I have had problems with the package manager of Sabion in the past. Uh, it does work quite well on the command line, but unfortunately, the GUI just doesn't do it for me, and I've got no idea why. It's also a little bit of a resource hog. So as far as comparing the two package managers with uh, what you've come to see from the desktop friendly people, such as Linux, Mint, and Ubuntu, and those that like the command line like, like Arch Linux, it's very difficult here to try and uh, to try and see what what exactly um, Savion is going for here. So I guess it's a little bit unfair to call this Gentoo in that because of a lot of the guys that that uh, like to use Gentoo are going to like to use the command line. So I don't think bagging on the graphical package manager is going to get me too far. But having said that, it could do with a little bit of work. I'm not exactly sure what's going wrong here and why it doesn't really work for me. And it doesn't really give, give it a fair go for you guys either. So, but having said that, the terminal based version of the package manager being, of course, entropy works quite well. And I'd have to say that it actually gives you a lot of output and it gives you a lot of feedback as to what it's actually doing. You can update your repositories through the terminal here, and you can see here that it goes through repository synchronization. You can also sort out from the pre-selected list of mirrors. You can also, with a simple command, you can choose which one. Uh, it'll run a simple test and give you the uh, give you the best choice of mirror for you to use as well. So as you can see here, it gives you a lot of output as to what it's actually doing with nice colors just to set it all apart, and uh, and it works quite well. Uh, on the terminal side. The graphical side, like I said, I can't really comment on it because it's not really working for me at the moment. So it's a bit of a bummer, but having said that, it's, uh, I, I imagine it still works for the majority of users out there. Now, they do have their own documentation as well, and they do have live help where you can jump in and ask them questions. And they've got easy links to all of that stuff on the desktop here and also under this Savion entry in the menu. Now, of course, if I hadn't mentioned this before, we are running XFC 4.8 along with the latest Linux kernel being 3.2 point something or other. And we also have LibreOffice Suite here, which you would usually expect to come standard. Multimedia apps, there actually isn't that many considering the size of the ISO. You are looking at a 1.4 gig download, so you do, you, you would expect to ha see a fair few apps in here. But unfortunately, it doesn't really come with that many. Graphics, of course, you've got GIMP, Restretto, and Shotwell. Internet, we've got Midori as your default internet browser. You also have Transmission, XChat, Pigeon, and Gnome PPP. So if you ask me, they do a nice job here of kicking the applications lightweight. You've also got Gnote there as opposed to Tomboy Notes, which is what you usually expect to see. But again, just to keep the libraries down without the inclusion of Mono there, so it keeps the system running lightweight. Now, also, having said that, the memory usage on this isn't too bad, I might add. Uh, you can see here I'm using 10% of about 2 gigs of memory. So it's not using that much at all. Again, once you've loaded this up with applications that uh, most people are used to, like Firefox and Thunderbird and Banshee and uh, so forth and so on, you are going to see the usage climb up a bit. But as a base system, they give you a very lightweight system and, it's, and they stick to that lightweight nature with the choice of apps that they've made. So Savion has a lot going for it. As far as the XFC version, the only reason I'm looking at this one is because I have looked at both the GNOME and the KDE releases in the past. Uh, of course, KDE is still looking essentially the same, except it's got KDE 4.8. GNOME is looking completely different with GNOME 3.2. And generally speaking, you are going to be staying up to date with the latest software and you can configure repositories to have bleeding edge or just the latest stable stuff. 
So again, this is not the same as pure Gentoo, and that is something I will be looking at in the future, but if you want to at least get your toes wet as far as the way Gentoo works, then this is a great way to try it. Uh, they do have some documentation, like I mentioned before, that is worth looking at. Uh, they do have a wiki as the, there as well as per standard. Uh, it's not quite as comprehensive as the ones you will find for Arch, and it's neither is it that widespread. Um, so I think in that respect, it obviously doesn't have as large a community as what something like Arch Linux does but I kind of get the feeling it is going for the same sort of crowd, except that it is pre-compiled and pre-packaged here in this ISO that you can download and install and use as a standalone system. Uh, now, Sabion in itself is very diverse and very modular. They've got versions for literally every desktop environment out there. They have XFCE, GNOME KDE, they've got LXDE, E17, and they've got server editions, headless editions that run the Amazon EC2. And they've literally got a build for every kind of architecture or situation you could possibly think of for a system. Uh, and really that boils down to, uh, uh, like I said, the modular nature of Gentoo. Uh, once you have installed this, you can uh, bolt bits in and take bits out of the kernel as you wish and really tweak it and optimize it for your exact circumstances. So it's not exactly for the new user here, but it is a good way to do it. It's, it's sort of one of those transition distributions from the user-friendly ones that we tend to think of uh, for new users such as Ubuntu and Linux Mint over to the more advanced ones like your vanilla Gentoo or Arch Linux or something of that nature. So again, you are going to learn a lot here by using it and you will learn to appreciate the command line and editing text files. But apart from that, I don't really see much that's drawing uh, Savion as a, as a very enticing distribution. It is in the top 20 at DistroWatch and if that's any indication that it does have some sort of following. And also they do provide some nice desktop friendly versions they, uh, that provide a lot of useful applications. They have a gaming edition out there, which is great for those who play a lot of games. So I think for the for the wide audience that they meet and the very open architecture that they have, I think it's well worth your while if you're looking to make a transition to a more advanced distribution. Now, as far as XFCE can, is concerned, you can see it looks very much like GNOME 2. You can see here that I can click on the panels and add new items or change the panel preferences. I simply select the panel that I want and I can add new items and widgets much like GNOME 2. So XFCE is really becoming the go-to desktop environment for those who still like uh, the GNOME 2 desktop experience. The panels are all configurable as well as far as opacity, size and icon size. And really XFC has actually quite a lot of settings that you can configure. Uh, it keeps getting more and more configurable and more and more powerful. So this is great for the, this is a great exhibition of what XFC is capable of. Again, XFC is a quite a widespread desktop environment. You can get it literally on any distribution you choose, but it's nice to see that Savion package up a nice lightweight distribution here, albeit a quite a heavy download. Uh, with some lightweight apps and a fairly lightweight system overall. They do include a few different themes in here, not too many to write home about, but you can see here if we go into the Appearance tab, we do have a few of the Equinox themes and then of course all the basic XFC themes that you've come to know, and then you've got the icons such as Elementary, and then of course the basic Gnome and Tango. Uh, fonts, nothing to write home about, and then of course settings just for toolbar style and menus and buttons. Now the other thing that I'd like to comment on is the Thunar file manager in that uh, it still it hasn't changed visibly much as much as uh, what the GNOME 3 and KDE counterparts have gone through. But having said that, it never really had to because it was a very functional file manager from day one. It would have been nice to see some uh, some inclusion for helpful scripts. I am noticing that more and more now in distributions. They are actually starting to include some pre-installed scripts just to help you do everyday stuff like converting PDFs or opening a folder as root or things of that nature. So it would be nice to see that kind of thing here instead of just the vanilla Thuna. But again, that's up to the developer's discretion. Now I am running this in VirtualBox at the moment, so there isn't much going on on the network side of things, but I have tested it on native hardware and the Samba sharing and Bluetooth, uh, on, on at least on the machine that I'm testing it on, have been working fine. So that's a good thing for uh, XFC as well. Of course, they do throw in a few useful tools here like your firewall manager, and bulk renaming, which is quite helpful if you're going to be renaming a whole file, a whole folder of uh, photos or something similar. You've got an updates notifier, you've got cups to manage all your printing, and you've also got Adobe Flash Player installed by default. So really there's not much more I want to say about this distribution as I have looked at it before. So if you want to check those, if you want to check those reviews out, I shall put links in the description below. But let me know in the comments below uh, if there are any Savion users out there or any Gentoo users out there. So I'd like to ask you a question. You can leave your answer in the comments below. If you are a Gentoo user or a Savion user, what do you like about Gentoo? I don't often hear from you guys, but I did hear from you uh, recently, at least a few of you in response to the Arch Linux review. And uh, many of you do compare Arch Linux 
Linux to Gentoo, and so there is a bit of back and forth about which distribution is better. Now, without starting the operating system flame wars, which I know is inevitable, uh, let me know in the comments below what you like about Gentoo and what a flagship feature is of Gentoo that you simply couldn't do without. Whether it's the versatile package management, the very open architecture, the modular nature of it all, let me know down below. Once again, thank you all for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Consider subscribing if you like this content on a regular basis, and I shall see you in the very near future with a, another app review. Peace out, everyone.